But really, I should have cleaned up the grease over there. And they should never put the deep fryer so close. <laughs> PSAs, also known as public service announcements or public information films as they're sometimes called here in the UK, are short films designed to teach the public about various important subjects such as work safety, road safety, fire safety and darker subjects such as domestic abuse, drugs and crime. As I'm sure a lot of you have seen by the amount of dark and disturbing PSAs list on YouTube, a lot of these PSAs were made to shock and frighten the viewers to get their point across and naturally leave a lasting impression in those who watch them. As I live in the UK and we have our own library of disturbing PSAs, I've decided to cover nine of them. Here are nine disturbing British PSAs. This PSA was made in 2002 a time when the internet was really starting to become more common in homes. With the internet being more readily available, people were also joining chat rooms, which were essentially very early versions of what we know today as social media. The best modern equivalent to this would probably be Discord. Of course, adults weren't the only ones to get in on this new platform. Children also joined chat rooms as a way to talk to their friends online, and of course, find new friends who might share their interests. However, voice chat wasn't really a thing back then, and few people had webcams, so there wasn't really a way to determine if the person you were talking to was who they said they were. This was especially dangerous for children. Many sick adult men used the internet to speak to children by pretending to be children themselves, becoming friends with them, and eventually attempting to persuade the children into meeting them in person, without telling their parents, naturally. It's completely obvious what their intentions with these children are, and I won't go into detail about them here, but this was clearly a huge problem in the early 2000s, and parents were obviously afraid that their children may end up talking to one of these men. In response, this PSA was made to teach children about the dangers of speaking to strangers online and giving their contact details. We hear a child's voice talking about his hobbies and how he enjoys collecting things, until the camera pans down and we see that these words are what this man was typing whenever he spoke to children online. It's definitely disturbing hearing that voice coming out of a man with that blank, emotionless look on his face, knowing what kind of twisted thoughts and intentions are going through his mind. Obviously, I know this man is only an actor, but he definitely does a good job of getting the point across that parents should always monitor who their children are talking to online. It's not quite as bad today as children are a lot smarter about who they talk to, but unfortunately, it does still sometimes happen. My hobbies are football, cycling, I like playing in the street and I like, like going down to the park and stuff. I like collecting medals, like football medals. I like the way they're presented and stuff because some are shiny and some are like blue, silver, green and stuff like that. But they're always, the ones that I pick are always like blue, but with shiny bits on. I always make sure that if I have a football player, it ain't just one with a leg out, it's one with an actual football on it. In 1978, the Electricity Council, which was the governing body that oversaw the electricity supply in England and Wales, created three public information films aimed at young children to teach them about the dangers of playing near overhead power lines and electrical substations. The filmmakers decided to go with a scare them straight approach with these PSAs, as not only were they intentionally designed to frighten children, but they were also aired well before what's known as the 9pm watershed time, in which nothing unsuitable for children was usually aired. These PSAs would be aired in between kid-friendly TV shows, so after the children of the time had just finished watching something harmless like Bagpuss, The Wombles or Rainbow, they were then treated to a short film of kids their own age being electrocuted to death. The three films were actually part of a longer PSA that was shown in schools in which a young Robin is taught about the dangers of going near power lines and substations by a wise owl. I must say I like to see kids enjoying themselves. You won't live long enough to see anything if you don't get off that wire. They were, hey? Yeah, who said that? Do you realise you're sitting on a live electric wire? Well, so what? Can't hurt us birds. Ugh. It will if you touch the wire above it with your wings. Hmm? You'll get hundreds of volts through you. 
The owl tells him the stories of three children who were electrocuted due to playing too close to power lines or substations. The first one is a boy who is shocked while he and his friend are moving a boat down to the river and the mask collides with a power line. <laughs> The owl says that the boy was lucky, only being knocked unconscious and recovering a few days later. He was lucky. The electric shock knocked him unconscious, but he was all right after a couple of days. Was he touching a metal part of the dinghy? It doesn't matter. Anything that's wet or got moisture on it can conduct electricity to Earth. The next one features two children flying a kite near a pylon. The kite flies into the pylon and the boy is shocked, resulting in the boy being badly burned, according to the owl. Watch out! You didn't say what happened to the boy. He wasn't so lucky. You mean he... He was badly burned on the arms and chest, but he didn't die. The final and most infamous story is that of two children who accidentally throw their frisbee into a substation. The boy, named Jimmy, tells the girl that they're not supposed to go in there, but the girl insists he goes in there to get their frisbee. He climbs up to get the frisbee, but as soon as he reaches to grab it, the electricity shocks him, causing him to burst into flames as he stays standing in place, having died from the electric shock. The girl can do nothing but scream Jimmy's name in horror. Go on, get it! We're not supposed to go in there. Oh, go on, there's a gap down there! A gang of kids broke in yesterday! I saw them! Pass me that bit of wood. This PSA may seem tame by today's standards, but remember, this was shown to children on TV channels where they should have just been able to relax and watch kids shows, so this PSA will have definitely affected those unfortunate enough to catch it in between their regular viewing. The children of the 80s wouldn't have it any easier, as 10 years later, another electricity PSA would be made that really hammered in just how dangerous electricity can be, and that PSA will also be on this list. When you have time to kill, make sure time doesn't kill you. Then we'll see you around. Have fun. But keep safe. And, and play, play safe. The National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, or the NSPCC, is, as the name suggests, a charity that aims to protect children from abuse. They've made many PSAs over the years, all of them very depressing and quite hard to watch, as they discuss the horrible abuse that children go through. They really hold nothing back. The only thing they don't do is show any graphic imagery, as they obviously can't do that with children. A common theme in these PSAs is that the children who the NSPCC aims to help are unable to speak out. This PSA may not be as disturbing to you as it was to me, but I definitely feel that it belongs here. It's about a girl named Sally, who isn't doing very well in school, seems to be unwilling to socialize, is laughed at by most of her schoolmates, and when her mother shows concern over her not eating, Sally simply replies that there's nothing wrong. Of course, as you've no doubt noticed, Sally is a ventriloquist puppet being controlled by this man, who is presumably her father. The idea, of course, is that Sally is too afraid to speak and that her father is doing all of the talking for her while everyone seems to be unable to see him sat there the whole time. As I said, the NSPCC doesn't hold much back when it comes to getting their points across, but their PSAs are definitely effective because you always end up remembering them. By the way, if you're a UK viewer and you're interested in donating to the NSPCC, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Who can tell me? Hands up. Nine times eight. Sally, do you know the answer? Uh. <laughs> do you want to come by my house after school? 
that. I'm fine. Can I go now? Thousands of children desperately need somebody to turn to. Call now and help us be there for them. Mothers Against Guns is a British organisation mostly made up of mothers who've lost children to gun violence. It was created by Michelle Forbes and Lucy Cope, who both lost their sons to gun crime and set up the organisation to raise awareness for gun crime and to help parents keep their children from falling into it themselves. Handguns have been banned almost everywhere in the UK since 1996, following the Dunblane Massacre, which had been carried out using weapons and ammo that had been legally purchased. People still managed to get their hands on guns though, leading to the police doubling their efforts in cracking down on the black market selling these firearms. However, people once again found a way around the gun ban by converting replica guns that you could buy from a toy store into real guns. They were cheaper, readily available, and didn't require any kind of license to purchase. Mothers Against Guns wanted to bring attention to this problem by creating a PSA that would shock viewers enough to really get across how serious of an issue this was. Toy guns were being modified into real guns, and who are toy guns usually made for? Children. In this PSA, we see a group of children going out to a field to play what seems to be a game similar to paintballing, whereby they hide in the grass in the woods and attempt to shoot each other with toy guns. The PSA focuses a lot on this boy here, who seems very worried about playing this game. We soon see why, as some of the other boys who are playing the game are seen falling to the ground as gunshots ring out, meaning they're not firing paintballs at each other, but live rounds and the boy is afraid that he'll be next. Then a younger girl suddenly shows up and asks if she can play too, to which the boy tells her to go away, which in hindsight seems to have been to save her from this deadly game. Immediately after this, one of the other boys sneaks up while he's distracted and fires, killing the boy. This PSA shows that when toy guns are used as real weapons, not even children are safe, and they too could be victims or even perpetrators of gun crime. Replica guns are being converted into real guns. They are easily available and require no license. They are toys that kill. Visit mothersagainstguns.net and help us get a total ban of replica guns. I'm sure a lot of you, like me, grew up watching Cartoon Network. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, the channel introduced a lot of us to the series that nowadays are considered classics. Shows like Ed, Ed and Eddie, Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Johnny Bravo and Cow and Chicken. It also introduced us to shows from decades earlier that were already considered classics. Those shows of course being Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, Scooby Doo and The Flintstones. 
One thing all of these series had in common was that they could all be very violent, with Tom and Jerry in particular being legendary for how violent it could get, with the title characters inflicting ridiculous amounts of pain on each other that, in reality, should have killed them so many times over. In fact, that's how it went in most of these series. The characters would be punched, hit, blown up, fell off of cliffs, electrocuted, you name it. But because it was all a cartoon, the characters were always fine immediately after. In 2002, the NSPCC released what is probably their most infamous PSA that went on a much different route from those that they had created before. It features a cartoon child living in a live action world. Unfortunately for this child, he lives with a father who seems to be, for lack of a better term, completely insane. He's screaming at the boy every time he's on screen. The PSA ends with the man once again going berserk, screaming, why do you make me do this? Before chasing the boy out of his room and pushing him down the stairs. David Droger, the creative director of this PSA said, we wanted to show the kind of violence and abuse that advertising regulators would never allow. Having a cartoon child enabled that to happen, making viewers extremely uneasy about the juxtaposition of an animated world with the grim reality of child abuse. Cartoons are normally a form of escapist fiction where people go to get away from reality. Showing that child abuse can even be depicted in cartoons just shows how serious and harrowing the issue is. What's this? Hey, you had all day, have you? Hey, you've been sitting here all day watching telly? Who's touched my videos? I said, who's messed up my videos? Don't just sit down when I'm talking to you. Get out of here. Start backing your ideas up, son. Hey, I'm telling you. <laughs> now, what the hell are you up to? Look at the state of this place. Look at the state of it. Look at it. I tell you about running indoors, all right? What did I tell you? Where are you? Here you are. What are you up to? Oh, no. I just asked you what you're up to. No. I'm trying. Let me do this. Mm. You dirty bastard. Get out. Guess it, get caught, you fucking rope. Get out of here. Fire, one of the four elements of nature, something that's existed for as long as the earth itself. Humans first learned to harness its power over one million years ago, using it as a source of light and warmth, and also as a means of scaring away predators. Neanderthals also used it to frighten large animals such as woolly mammoths, forcing them to fall off the edge of cliffs when they hunted them. Today, fire is still an important tool used for cooking and heating, and still used as a light source by people in more rural areas. Of course, fire can also be very dangerous and potentially even deadly. If not kept under control, it can cause devastating damage to the area around it. Parts of Australia regularly have to deal with huge forest fires, which can last for weeks or even months, destroying massive areas of woodlands and killing countless animals as well as humans. Of course, the wilderness isn't the only place where people can fall victim to fire. Fires can occur when people are just out and about, shopping for example. They can occur at someone's place of work, and of course, they can occur in your own home. House fires have been a regular subject for PSAs in the UK for as long as PSAs have been made. So parents, I'd like you to make a promise. Repeat after me, I swear on my child's life, test my smoke alarm or clock change day to give my family the best chance of surviving a house fire. You did promise, didn't you? Because you can't turn back time.
A fire doesn't have to kill you to take your life. I love people. I love to be around them, see them smile, see the laughing faces of their young. And children in turn, I'm drawn to this flickering hypnosis. To reach out, as I do in fateful embrace. My name is Fire. Be careful when you're near me. I can't help myself. Many people die in house fires every year, though these deaths are usually from smoke inhalation rather than directly from the fire itself. Gas fires, electrical fires, kitchen fires, and the subject of this PSA, children playing with matches. For a PSA made in the 70s, this one is actually quite disturbing. Instead of showing people trapped inside a burning house, we see what's left behind after a raging fire destroyed everything inside. We're treated to the visual of a completely burned house. The walls and floors are completely black from being burned by the fire, and as the camera moves throughout the house, we hear the ghostly screams of people who died in the fire, including a child screaming for their mother. The child is apparently the one who inadvertently started the fire while they were playing with matches. It's a disturbing and tragic thought that a child ended up killing their family because they didn't realize how dangerous the matches they were playing with happened to be. This PSA definitely does a good job of showing how devastating a house fire can be. Not by showing the fire in action, but instead showing what the inferno leaves behind. Please keep matches away from children. Of all PSA subject matters, road safety is easily one of the most frequently promoted. Ever since the 1970s, there have been countless PSAs aimed at both children and adults. Probably the most famous were those featuring the legendary Green Cross Cove Man, played by the late David Prowse, who some of you may know for being the suits actor for Darth Vader in the original Star Wars trilogy. And just like in those movies, David was dubbed over because the filmmakers apparently didn't like his Bristol accent. When you get to the curb, always stop, stop, stop. His PSAs were always light-hearted and were simply designed to teach children how to safely cross the road. People who saw the films as children still acknowledge what they learned from him to this day, saying how his advice saved their lives. The Green Cross Code Man was so beloved that David Prowse even played him one last time in 2014 at 80 years old, appearing in two short films aimed at young adults. Grown-ups, always use the Green Cross Code, because I won't be there when you cross the road. Another important part of road and driving safety that was often promoted was wearing seatbelts, with the most well-known of these featuring Jimmy Savile who, let's just say, is not as fondly remembered as David Prowse for reasons I can't really talk about here. It's very likely that 400 of you will be injured in your cars tomorrow. Why let it happen? Clunk, click, it's so simple. Clunk the car door, click the seat belt. Even if you are just going around the corner, clunk, click every trip. But speaking of seat belts, this PSA made by the Northern Irish Department of Environment in 2001 chose to go a completely different route from the light-hearted, child-friendly PSAs of the 70s. It's about a young man named Michael, who's going for a drive with his girlfriend and their friends. It seems nice enough, until the narrator says that Michael is going to hit his girlfriend so hard that she ends up with permanent brain damage. At first, the viewer's left wondering, what do they mean by that? And then it happens. The friend of Michael who's driving isn't watching where he's going and crashes into an oncoming car. Everyone in the car is wearing their seatbelts, except for Michael, who's flung into the front of the car hitting one of his friends in the face in the process. Another car then crashes into the back of their car, flinging Michael into the back, 
In doing so, his body collides with the driver's head. He then collides head first twice with his girlfriend before being thrown into the car window. We then cut to the aftermath where a paramedic says that Michael and his two friends died with Michael being the one who did the damage. Because he chose not to wear his seatbelt, his carelessness led to the death of his two friends and left his girlfriend with permanent brain damage. Had he worn it, everyone in the car would most likely have still been seriously injured but would probably have survived. Seatbelts exist for a reason. They seem so simple and mundane, but they're designed to save our lives in the event of a car crash. And by choosing not to wear one, you're basically signing your own death warrant and possibly those of the people traveling with you. Three dead in this vehicle. The girl is critical. They say the guy without the seatbelt did the damage. No seatbelt, no excuse. From DOE, supported by AXA Insurance. This is the other PSA about the dangers of electricity that I mentioned earlier in the video. Unlike Play Safe, this PSA didn't try to lighten the mood by including colourful cartoon characters and didn't ease the viewers into it by showing people surviving being electrocuted. Almost everyone who comes into contact with electricity dies. The film shows Darren and his younger brother Tom seeing a motorcycle which Darren dreams of riding. I want to go on it! Hey Gary, you're going to have to give me a go on this at the weekend. Maybe. I'll see ya. Hey Darren, wait for Tom. You're supposed to be looking after him. On the way, they meet their friend Andy and begin walking to school together. On the way there, they're harassed by a gang of teenagers who chase them all the way to an electricity substation. Tom spots a football in there, which Darren tries to break in and get. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, mate. This place is electrified. Look, just take a look. Oh, that's the frightened little kids. You all right if you don't touch anything? I've seen people working up there. Yeah, well, um, I don't particularly want to mess around with this type of stuff. It's not worth it. Come on, Darren, Andy's going. You're like him. No bottle. Once they enter class, Mr. Jones, who works for the electricity board, teaches them the dangers of electricity, showing clips of what happened when people ignored or did not know the danger that could be present in the situation. The first clip that Mr. Jones shows is a young boy going fishing, hitting an overhead cable, being knocked unconscious, and falling into the river. Of course we knew about the electric cable. We'd fished there loads of times before. He just didn't think. He forgot the pole was so long. Go! That lad was burnt, knocked unconscious, and thrown into the river. All because he hadn't bothered to dismantle the fishing pole. His face and hands are going to be disfigured for life. The second clip shows a young girl who is playing badminton with her friend. The friend hits the shuttlecock towards a tree with overhead cables in it. When the girl goes to hit the shuttlecock, she accidentally hits the cable, electrocuting her and causing her to drop dead. Watch out for the wires. They're only for a telephone, silly. I thought she knew those cables were dangerous. Oh, my God! That's a mistake a lot of people make, thinking that power cables are for the telephone. Now, that little girl was electrocuted by the supply to the house. The third clip shows a young boy cycling inside an abandoned warehouse where they smash things until a boy whacks a socket with a pipe, much to the excitement of his friend. The boy then hits the socket repeatedly, causing the sparks to kill his friend. We thought it won't use no more. We were only mucking around smashing things. I hit this little box and took the sparks flew out. Hit it again! Hit it again! Hit one up behind me. I didn't see him. It jumped out and got him. He was my best mate. Those lads ignored the warning signs, and now someone's got to tell his parents that their son's dead. The final one shows a boy climbing up a pylon to rescue a kite that younger children were playing with. But when the boy gets too close to the wire, a huge explosion of sparks kills the boy, making him fall back to the ground. Lucky they let go of it. They'd have been electrocuted. We should have told the police. I suppose you never knew about high voltage electricity. You're crazy! He ignored the danger signs. Leave it there! He was stupid. He wouldn't come down. He didn't know electricity would go through the kite. It just jumped through thin air. He never touched the wire. He never touched it. Well, you don't have to touch. 
electricity jumps gaps straight from the electrical equipment through thin air to anything near. You, if you're close, you wouldn't stand a chance. During the lesson, Darren ignores all of this by listening to his Walkman and daydreaming of going on the motorcycle that his friend was using earlier. On the way back from school, the boys see their friend with the motorcycle. They come over and talk to him until Darren sees that his other friend's ball is deflated. This makes Darren remember the football in the substation and he takes Tom with him. Darren breaks through a fence while Tom keeps lookout. Where's Darren taking Tom off to? Oh, I don't know. No, he wouldn't. Get a football! Ball, 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 ball. No, Darren! Darren manages to get the football, but is electrocuted in the process, killing him. Tom runs in to help his brother, but gets electrocuted as well, as Andy screams at him to stop. Darren! No, Tom! Later, the fire brigade, the ambulance, and the police all arrive at the scene at night, as Andy remembers Mr. Jones's lecture to the class about the dangers of electricity. Powerful stuff really lives up to its title, not shying away from showing the viewers the grim and disturbing results from messing with electricity, and why ignoring the warnings will only result in the serious injury and likely death of those who choose to take the risk. Now those people ignored the danger signs. And now someone's got to tell his parents that their son's dead. Any fool could get killed. You're right, you don't touch him. Now, what he has to Please say me. is important. You wouldn't stand a chance. Listen. You can't afford to take a chance with electricity because you can be killed just by getting near. You don't have to touch. Electricity jumps gaps. The moment you step past the warning signs, you're walking straight into trouble. The final PSA on this list may very well be the most disturbing. As the title suggests, it takes place on a Sunday where this mother is making lunch for her two children who are doing their homework. Her older son walks in with his friends and they all exchange pleasantries with each other. The eldest son even asks his mother if she wants him to pick up his younger siblings from school the next day. All in all, everything seems very nice and normal. But then the older son starts talking to his friends about an incident that occurred involving their friend Anton, who actually shot someone, presumably resulting in that person's death. They also discuss possible retaliation from the deceased's friends, but the elder son shrugs off the danger, saying that having younger siblings gives him an excuse to stay indoors while, quote, the beef stays outside. As he's saying this though, his mother gets a handgun from a shelf in the kitchen and points it towards the table. One of the boys sees this, and before he could warn anyone, the mother pulls the trigger, killing her youngest son. The others react in shock and horror as the mother falls against the wall and slowly drops to the floor, looking completely numb to what she had just done. To explain what the PSA was trying to get across here, they're basically saying that the mother would not inform the police of what the teens had been involved in. And by doing so, it was more or less just as bad as if she had pulled the trigger herself. The creators of the PSA wanted viewers to realize that not going to the police about a gun crime allows it to possibly happen again. Some people believe that this is the most graphic and disturbing of all British PSAs. It was actually considered too violent for TV and was only shown in cinemas before movies rated 18 plus. Due to this, it's likely that less people saw it than the creators intended, but to those who did witness it when it was first released, it no doubt left a very big impression. Okay. Hi, you're right. Hello. Hi. Oh man, where's my fish fingers? <laughs> no, no, no. no Coming no. to pick up the kids from school tomorrow. Yeah, if you don't mind. No blood. That rave day was big, I like. I no, it was Bad sewage. Boy, big I bet you any money, Anton flopped the show. I bet you that. I bet you that. I bet you that. I bet you that. Doesn't always. matter what the occasion. Birthday, christenings, my man always finds a way to tell you something. Show, though, yeah. It was a good thing you man never come because it was a big hype thing going about last night. See, that's yeah. why I like having younger brothers and sisters. I stay indoors while the beef stays outside. And there
there we have it folks that's the end of the video and depending on when this actually gets uploaded this is either my last video of 2021 or my first video of 2022. I hope you found this video interesting and maybe entertaining. I'm going to get right to work on writing the next video. Please like this video, leave a comment and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.